in ancient times in India, understanding this, the soldiers went out in the field and fought the political fight. In other words, if our politics leads to a conflict that cannot be resolved, we have to have a non-destructive alternative. And so in India, civilians were never harmed. This was the ancient way. Now, sadly, that's not been true for the rest of the civilizations that have been going throughout the world and conquering and colonizing. The United States was the first culture in the world to kill massive amounts of civilian population by simply dropping a bomb on them. What could be less noble than Hiroshima and Nagasaki? And at that time, then President Truman had the gall to say, I hope that God is pleased with us for doing this. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Truman, he's not. She's not. They're not. It's not. What the Vedic civilization knew 8,000, 12,000 years ago was nothing that we would contend about is ever worth that price. Namaste. Welcome to Vedic Vidya. My name is Jeffrey Armstrong, Govindra Rishi. Vedic Vidya is available exclusively on Chitty Media, English Channel, on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. IST. Our topic tonight is the ancient yogic truths of human conflict and a world filled with weapons of mass destruction, or how human beings are supposed to behave when conflict is inevitable. We find ourselves in a world that would be unfamiliar to any of our ancestors. The technology that has been unleashed over the last hundred or so years has altered life and altered our world to such a degree that the speed and immense powers that it has released, the penetration into everyone's lives to a massive degree, is an extension of human power and influence that is entirely unprecedented and a possible invasion of our individuality and an equally possible extinction of our world and its populations. So in this moment of human pain and suffering, as we watch innocent people, you see, it's never happened before, that en masse we could watch on our television while we're safe, having breakfast, without fear, of being harmed in that moment. We can watch others who are just like us, children, women with children, elders, everyone, and see their lives just torn to pieces. And see them have no defense whatsoever against this. Because you see the vulnerability of us as human beings, the fact that we're soft and squidgy and not made with armor. We don't have much in the way of defense against life on a good day. At least animals have a hard shell or a tough skin or something. But we don't. And so we live in a very unusual time, and each time in history has a unique challenge. And before I discuss that further, I just want to refer you back because the ancient culture of India is a very exemplary civilization 
for many things. Many things happened there, and they thought about them very deeply. But there's a principal rule in yoga, in the Vedic knowledge, and you see it embodied in the namaste. The namaste actually means, I see each living being as divine, each living being as valuable. And to the best of my ability, I'm going to preserve them and their life while I have mine. The term for this in Sanskrit is ahimsa. Ahimsa doesn't mean nonviolence. That's a mistranslation. It means the least violence while doing what must be done. And so, in ancient India, there was a principle that if a conflict arose that required armies, soldiers, people with weapons, people trained in harming and killing, essentially protectors, if protectors ever had to fight, they never involved citizens who are considered to be innocent. Innocent because they are, cannot defend themselves. They're not trained to do so. This is so important and so obviously difficult for us to understand now. But what the ancients used to do is, in order to have a conflict, trained soldiers with their weapons would go to a field. This is how they did it in India. What we would consider a playing field, like a football field or a soccer field. And they would line up there in front of each other and they would have a moment of conflict or a day of conflict. And so many people would be injured or killed, maimed, disabled. But the people in the conflict were only soldiers, only protectors. It's just like in our body, we have an immune system which has particular cells that fight against invading organisms and things that shouldn't be in us. But not all the cells in the body are fighting cells, are white blood cells. But this concept of an immunity and the notion that human civilization, we are so vulnerable. Have you not seen in the films of what's going on right now? Families, mothers with six children, can you imagine trying to move six children out of harm's way with the sophisticated weapons that we have now? But even then, even back in the times that I'm talking about in India, they understood this principle that all that was sacred in life was sacred to everyone, even if you were temporarily opposed to them for some particular reason. That didn't mean that they weren't human beings and weren't sacred and weren't deserving of respect. It only meant somehow, because this is the nature of material life, you were having a conflict. On an everyday basis, you would try not to make that be harmful, hurtful, or violent. But in the rare circumstances when actual military conflict was necessary, the only civilized way to do this is to send soldiers prepared for and trained in combat out on a field and consider that that conflict, like a sporting event, someone will win and someone will lose, and the issue on which we were, in this case, voting, having our warriors fight for us because we're not trained. Even in those days, a, a person untrained in weaponry would not stand a chance in the presence of a warrior. One warrior could kill a hundred people who were not trained as warriors. Now, one mistake and we can kill a whole city. What we're witnessing right now is supposed to be a very important lesson for all human beings to stop and reconsider that we have to find another way 
to act out this conflicted and quarrelsome nature that is inherent to us. We actually have to find a way to do that that doesn't go down the road we're going down now. Cause us to destroy the very tender feelings, the very reason that anyone might fight in a conflict is to protect someone that they love and adore. And so, in ancient times in India, understanding this, the soldiers went out in the field and fought the political fight. In other words, if our politics leads to a conflict that cannot be resolved, we have to have a non-destructive alternative. And so in India, civilians were never harmed. This was the ancient way. Now, sadly, that's not been true for the rest of the civilizations that have been going throughout the world and conquering and colonizing. And it is important for us to remember, while we observe this, that our cultures did, many of us, not all, but many of us went out into the world. And I particularly have to say this to America. It's important for America to remember that what we call America was not a democracy. It was a colonization, a brutal, violent displacing of whole civilizations. This is called karma. You know, what goes around comes around. So it's very important to understand that essentially the United States Canada, all the colonial civilizations who recently displaced others, the displacement that took place in South America, Central America, Africa, all was based upon using gunpowder and violent weapons that those people didn't have to take from them what was theirs, to be prejudiced against them for a variety of reasons, color, just for being who they were. And so we stand at a very amazing and unique and dangerous moment in history where with our ultimate weapons and P.S. to those who've forgotten, I remember because I was quite young when I was told about it. The United States was the first culture in the world to kill massive amounts of civilian population by simply dropping a bomb on them. What could be less noble than Hiroshima and Nagasaki? And at that time, then President Truman had the gall to say, I hope that God is pleased with us for doing this. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Truman, he's not. She's not. They're not. It's not. And so massive force to try to rectify the conflicts of our human condition is never appropriate. And this is one of the lessons that our entree into advanced technology is teaching us. With all of its benefits, it's got a lesson. Oh, by the way, your ability to destroy each other and the planet is now ultimate. We are living in a very dangerous moment in history where we have to learn and grow very quickly to keep up with technology, to keep up with people who would control our lives via our technology, and even worse, to keep up with the situation where our elected officials or unelected officials would destroy whole populations with ultimate weapons of devastation and destruction that are so terrible, so despicable, that no one with any honor in ancient times would even consider the use of such destructive implements on the gentle peoples of any culture. We really must approach this with a correct historical understanding. Number one, it may be karma we have created. 
It may be cause and effect to what we've already done that is being shown to us. Two, we are poised on the brink of the worst possible disaster that this world has perhaps ever seen. A very unhappy ending to technology empowering us so. So much that we can see each other all around the world. So much that you can hear me and see me, though I am distant from where you are now. And this great endowment of knowing one another so intimately and so much better and so profoundly and getting to know each other so well, the shadow that is above it is the ultimate ability to destroy perhaps our entire planet. Perhaps in a few moments of anger, the entire thing goes up in smoke. And everything that we've created so far. So please, as much as you can, in a non-sectarian way, not with any particular religion in mind, but with this in mind, that all life is sacred, that every living being is sacred. And taking that life, as we do with food, to preserve our own, is one level of distortion. If we do that too much, there'll be no animals, no creatures left on the planet. Or we'll become barbarians while doing that. Perhaps we have. Perhaps there's a gentler way to live. Perhaps we can rethink this whole situation. Instead of staying in these adverse sides with one another, as if we are sporting teams competing with one another, but we're not competing, we're annihilating. We're creating pain that generations from now will be spoken of and sung of as sadly and in despair of the darkest moment in history when we actually unleashed unknown weapons of epic proportion and evaporated hundreds of millions of people in a week. So, what the Vedic civilization knew 8,000, 12,000 years ago was nothing that we would contend about is ever worth that price. So we must all have an opinion, which is pull back from the precipice. Stop what you're doing and find another way. And we must learn to see each other, everyone, no matter what we are, male, female, animal, vegetable, from one culture or another culture, with honoring and respect. Now is the moment for the Namaste culture to alter the path of history. Vedic Vidya means shining the light of truth. Tune in to Vedic Vidya on the Chitty English Channel Sunday night at 7 p.m. IST. My name is Kavinda Rishi, Jeffrey Armstrong. See you next time. And let's not just have a Namas day, let's have a Namas year. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.